Hi, I'm Brent, and welcome to my channel. Uh, today we're going to take a look at some anvils. I happen to have several anvils in the shop right now. Uh, so we're going to take a look at them. I'm going to explain to you a little bit about each one of them, and we're going to test their rebound. Just have a little fun. Let's get going. All right, the first anvil we're going to take a look at is this Emerson anvil. They're out of Bossier City, Louisiana. This is a cast steel anvil. It's cast from 4140. The entire anvil is brought up to temperature before quenching, so the hardening should be pretty deep on it. It's a 100 pound anvil. Let's take a look and see what kind of rebound it's got. I'm gonna try to drop this ball bearing from about 20 inches and see what we get. The next anvil we're going to take a look at is a rigid petting house out of Germany. Uh, this anvil weighs 275. It is forged steel and the actual steel is proprietary. I could not find that information. Uh, but the rock wheel should be in the upper 50s, low 60s on it. So let's see what kind of rebound we get on it. Once again, dropping from 20 inches. The third anvil we're going to take a look at is an old Peter Wright anvil. Uh, of course, this, this anvil is, is wrought iron. It had a tool steel face on it. Uh, weighs about 140 pounds. One thing that is a little different about this particular anvil is I have hard faced the surface of it. And I've used it successfully for probably five or six years now. Uh, I would do it all over again. It made this anvil so much better to use, so much more enjoyable. Um, I highly suggest you do it if you have the means and capability. Uh, it does take a lot of time when you get to the grinding part of it. The article that I followed to hard face this anvil was written by Rob Gunther and Carl Schuler, and it was published in Anvil Magazine in 1998. The rods that I used to hard face this anvil were the Studi 2110, first and then the Studi 1105. You do have to preheat your anvil, I think, to about 400 degrees to use these, but they work very well. So once again, we're gonna drop from 20. One last little kind of close up of the hard facing. It has lasted very well. Now it does have a few dings in it, but uh, I'd say that has more to do with uh, my lack of accuracy than anything else. It is a very good hard surface to work on. We have one last anvil we're gonna throw in here. This is a striking anvil. Uh, this is a four inch thick piece of carbon steel. Uh, let's see what kind of rebound we got on this one, just for fun. almost non-existent. The next thing I want to talk to you about regarding ambles is anvil dressing. Everybody's got an opinion on this. I'm not trying to force my opinion on you. I'll just tell you what I think. I think you have to radius the edges of your anvil to do quality work. Now, I don't think there's any set radius for that. I think you should do the work that you normally do and slowly radius the edges of your anvil more and more till you no longer get cold shuts on it. Uh, last night I was using this rigid petting house. It's brand new. The, the edges have not been dressed yet. And no matter how hard I tried, I would get cold shuts in my work. Uh, we'll take a look, closer look at a couple of my anvils and uh, I'll show you what I've done to them. This is my Peter Wright anvil, the anvil that I've had the longest. It's probably got about 3 sixteenths to a quarter inch radius edges on it. They're pretty much the same all the way down. Uh, I've enjoyed using it, no real problems there. Uh, I wouldn't change a thing on that. This is the Emerson Anvil that uh, is gonna be my portable setup. I have dressed it already. I went from about 3 16ths to a quarter on the front and radiused to nothing 
right up in this area, I left this sharp, and then I radiused a good bit on the back so that I could use the turning cams uh, to my liking. Did the same radius on both sides. So far, I think I'm liking it. This is my rigid petting house, as I told you moments ago. It has not been dressed yet. Do not like these edges on it at all. Uh, matter of fact, this is some tong blanks that I was making last night. I repeatedly got cold shuts on them. It was a real struggle to keep from getting cold shuts on them. So I'm gonna slowly start radiusing this anvil to I get it where I no longer get cold shuts on the type of work that I enjoy doing, and we'll leave it there. The last thing I want to talk to you about uh, on anvils is uh, their height. Now everybody discusses this, and and, and you hear all kinds of things. Um, a lot of people tell you you want your anvil height where you where your hammer face is square when you when you hit it, or where your knuckles with your hand relaxed at your side or barely below it. Uh, I, I really, honestly don't know what to think about all that. Um, as far as the hammer being square to the face when you get to it, uh, honestly, I, I don't think a whole lot about that. Uh, stop and think about how many houses were built over the years by carpenters by hand, and they hit a whole lot of nails square and drove them right in without having to move the house around to get their hammer head square to the nail. Uh, the body is a beautiful piece of machinery, and quite honestly, I can get this hammer square uh, and the face flush on, on something at a lot of different heights, quite honestly. Uh, so I, I don't necessarily agree with that thought process. Um, I think you need to use your anvils a good bit and find out what works for you and what's comfortable for you. Now this is my, my first anvil that I've, that I've used a whole lot. This anvil is at 35 and a half inches. Uh, I'm about six foot one. This anvil is very comfortable for me as far as striking is concerned. It's very comfortable for me as far as holding materials. I think that is one thing that's important. You need to get your anvil to a height that you can hold things flat on your anvil comfortably. I see some of these guys have their anvils so low that all their work they're doing, the back of their tones is pointing to the sky. How is that good for your work? So um, this 35 and a half inch anvil is, is very comfortable for me. The only downside to this anvil is it's a touch too high for when I need to put my tones between my legs, you know, for third hand basically. So uh, that is the only downside to that. Okay, my next anvil that uh, I wanted to play around with the height on is this 100 pound Emerson. Now I lowered this 100 pound Emerson from 35 and a half to 33 and a half. So I lowered it a full two inches. Well, I went too much. Uh, I'm still pretty comfortable striking on it, but when I have my tongs in my hand and my working position, as you can see, the back of my tongs are pointing up a little bit. I wish this anvil was about another inch higher. So I'm either gonna have to cut the legs and extend them or put some plates under the feet or something of that nature to make this anvil more comfortable for me. Another thing I find with this anvil, now I'm a horn right, left-handed hobby smith, is when I'm using this anvil and I'm striking, I think I'm so far down right here that I'm pulling this way a lot and this anvil seems to follow me all over. I probably passed through your neighborhood at one point in time. Uh, I have to constantly fix the location of my anvil. And I think in some part it's got to do with the fact that it's so light. But I also do think that the fact that I'm so far down in my swing, I'm starting to pull back towards my body a little bit. And with all the rank rebound and everything involved, it pulls it towards me. So that one's at 33 and a half. Okay, this is my 275 rigid petting house. I just got done with a stand on this one. I put this one at about 34 and three quarters. Um, 
I think I'm going to like the height on it a whole lot. It feels great so far. And as long as I have my boots on, I can comfortably put some tongs between my legs to have that third hand, so to speak. So, so far, this anvil uh, feels like it's going to be right for me. So, uh, that's just my two cents on it. Everybody's got their opinion. Honestly, you have to spend some time in the shop and figure out what works for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe, and share. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.